Hello and welcome everyone to today's Fairwork webinar. Today, our colleagues from more, especially uh, Gustavo and Rui, will introduce the initial Fairwork prototype. So what we have implemented for our DIDSS system, which is our AI-based system for support, making decision support in this production environment. Before we start, I just want to make some hints that we will record this webinar and upload it then to YouTube. And also we will take some pictures uh, during and after the webinar. But without further ado, I will now hand over to Gustavo, who I think will start with the webinar. Thank you very much. The stage Thank is you. yours. Thank you very much, Christian. Hello, good afternoon and welcome. My name is Gustavo. I work for Marco Lab. And in this webinar, I will present you the overall description of the first prototype of Fair Work. I thank you for coming. So in this webinar, I present the integration of the components of our architecture in the first prototype. I will cover all the components developed in this last year and how they relate to each other in the project. I'll present the prototype deployment phase, showcasing how the configured components work together in a real world scenario. Then I'll talk about how the system can be extended to other use cases. And at the end, I'll give an outlook and conclusions. So I'd like to start pointing out the building blocks that compose our architecture. Starting with the AI services, we will go over the services that promote recommendations in our decision support systems, considering some algorithms. The real world data providers, bringing highly relevant human factors data into our system. The configuration block, responsible for configuring services, workflows, and user interfaces. The orchestrator managing microservices in a workflow-based and multi-agent approach. The user interface providing an intuitive visualization of the decision process to the decision maker. And the knowledge base providing an infrastructure to the data exchange within our framework. More detailed information can be viewed in our webinar number four, Introduction to the High-Level Architecture for Fair Work, which you can check on the website. For contextualizing our prototype, if you use case, we apply it to a workload balance scenario. The objective is to provide solutions that optimize efficiency and equity in a resource allocation perspective. We implement strategies to deal with worker availability, resilience, and preferences in a dynamic nature, which is in its essence a resource allocation problem. In this part, I'd like to describe the services to support the decision using this first prototype, starting with an application of neural networks to the mentioned resource allocation problem. So this approach uses deep learning to train on historical data to recommend the allocation of workers to the production lines. Based on data of experienced employees, the neural network improves the allocation process, taking basis on previous choices of these experienced employees. So the network learns the patterns and relationships in the historical data, making it able to perceive the decision-making strategies employed by these experienced employees in previous manual allocations. The solution aims at allocating workers to needed production lines with the aid of machine learning, which adds perceivable value in contrast with manual allocations that still happen in the industry. Change. So the second approach is a linear sun assignment solver. This approach perceives the scenario of an assignment problem that involves assigning workers to slots required by a production order. Each order has different requirements and not all workers are suited for every task. This brings us to a cost optimization perspective, which aims to assign workers to slots in a way that minimizes the total cost while ensuring that each worker and each slot is used optimally. In other words, we have production demands and worker preferences. This optimization approaches addressing the balance of these often conflicting perspectives while taking advantage of human data. In this third service, the objective is to explore how decision trees can be adaptable to various and evolving decision-making scenarios. The service allows for the generation of different decision trees, and it can be tailored to the specific problems of the use case. A model-based approach was employed contrasting with role-based services by using machine learning. 
The service's main functions include training decision trees and using them to provide decisions with improved transparency in the decision tracking. In this fourth service, a multi-Asian system was developed to support decision-making in the given use case scenario. One of the main advantages of using MASS is being able to model with stakeholder in the decision process. And this model occurs as modeling each stakeholder as an agent that reflects each entity's capabilities and goals in the overall process. It represents the relevant actors of the given decision-making as an agent capable of interacting. In this specific scenario, the process goal is to allocate the most suitable workers to the given production lines. We have agents represent the workers' resilience, preferences, experience, and agents represent the production lines, requirements, and demands. These agents interact and negotiate between them in order to provide a consensus through resolving conflicts that commonly happen in these contexts where scarce resources are disputed in an allocation dynamic. This approach is quite interesting due to the possibility of considering actors of decision-making usually neglected, therefore taking into account valuable inputs that enrich the decision plurality in terms of important and different perspectives that compose holistically a robust decision. Finally, here the aim was to create a decision services and knowledge-based approach through conceptual modeling. The idea was to enable decision makers to directly encode their decision knowledge and use this to create a service that integrates with the system. This is achieved through conceptual models which serve as inputs for the decision service. The implementation occurred through the OLIVE framework which consumes models created with the decision model notation language. This experiment focused on two primary decisions, determining if a work is allowed on a specific production line and assigning allowed workers to various lines based on their preferences, ensuring that no worker is assigned to multiple lines simultaneously. One of the most interesting aspects in this approach is that it leverages conceptual modeling and rule-based decision services to create adaptable transparent and efficient decision-making tools within the decision support framework. This next component, the real-world uh, data providers, is responsible for the integration of real-world data into the system. One of the main services is the intelligent sensor box. The ISB has the purpose of measuring physiological and psychological strain in human stakeholders during tasks and providing insights into their resilience. This is achieved through a network of wearable sensors coupled with AI-based analytics. These sensors collect biosignals such as heart rate, skin and core board temperature, which are processed to generate a resilience score. The resilience score reflects a worker's capacity to handle physiological or cognitive emotional strain without long-term negative impacts. Essentially, a higher resiliency score indicates a worker's ability to endure more stressful environments and demanding tasks. This score is computed using the Physiological Strain Index, which integrates biosensor data over time, providing a measure of strain experienced by the worker. The intelligent sensor box not only captures this data, but also anonymizes it to protect worker privacy. It is then made accessible through the knowledge-based VRS API. The course implementation serves as a proof of concept demonstrating how physiological data can be effectively used to support decision-making in industrial scenarios. The ISB is crucial for enabling human-centered data decision support system. The configurator is also another indispensable component of the system framework. It offers a collection of tools designed to realize the system configuration. It conceives a web page where tiles for access to wizards and platforms for configuring interfaces, workflows, and microservices. One of the key subcomponents is the Microsoft controller. It allows the definition and management of configurable connectors, REST connectors, can retrieve data from a REST service and return its output. It's a flexible approach that allows for definition and addition of microservice operation as needed. It also facilitates workflows management. 
Users can define and manage workflows either manually or through provided APIs to ensure that integration and efficient management of the workflows within the X, the system occurs. So the configuration provides a flexible environment for configuring these microservices, workflows, and user interfaces. Following is the orchestration of microservices. A workflow-based orchestration allows for the definition of paths to follow in a flow-oriented way where the services to be executed need to perform some steps. They are performed in the form of a combination of API calls that retrieve the required data for a given use case, where the microservice controller is used to create the calls for the services. In the example in the figure, one can see a test call to the Fairware Knowledge Base microservice, accessing the knowledge base, fetching the required data, providing the output. In the dashboard, the user specifies input parameters for the service and sends a request. The output is then provided on a panel on the right in the image. So the microservices created are used in the workflow engine to realize the intended service. To address different use case scenarios, it's necessary to retrieve data from the knowledge base. The workflows are created to pull in workers and orders information using services defined in the microservice controller accessible in the configurator. The setup allows users to select microservices, configure them, and even test their operations within the dashboard. For the next part, I'd like to hand over to my colleague, Hui. Thank you, Hui. Um, thank you. Uh, thank you, Gustavo. Uh, I will be speaking briefly about the uh, orchestrator that was developed using a multi-agent uh, approach, multi-agent system approach. Uh, it was used, as can be seen in the figure, a uh, modular approach. Uh, the proxy server ensures uh, secure communication with the orchestrator. Uh, the database uh, stores the user login credentials required for authentication within the orchestrator, but the, the core component is the, the orchestrator module itself. Uh, it exposes a RESTful API so that uh, data from uh, this uh, can deliver data for the, the user interface. Uh, it also uh, contacts uh, and is responsible for querying the available microservices uh, to get data. Um, and uh, this type of uh, uh, architecture makes the orchestrator secure and easily scalable to include more scenarios and its corresponding microservices, as well as it allows an implementation of a decentralized orchestration of the available uh, microservices. Uh, looking in terms of uh, operationality, uh, when a request arrives to the uh, orchestrator, uh, it creates uh, two different types of agents, the data collector agent and uh, microservice agents. Uh, the microservice agents uh, are created dynamically in terms of the microservices identified in the, in the request parameters. Uh, and uh, a microservice agent is uh, responsible for communicating with a specific uh, microservice. Uh, the data collector agent uh, is responsible for collecting all the data of all active microservice uh, agents that were enabled uh, in that uh, request. So let's uh, see an example. Uh, if a request arrives and uh, let's say that this request uh, for the workload balance scenario, we have three available uh, uh, microservices. So let's assume that the, the three uh, uh, microservices are signal, signaled in the request to, uh, to get the, 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 the results from. So based on that request, three different microservices are created, one per microservice, as I already uh, explained. Uh, this means that according with the specifications of each microservice, uh, each agent has to prepare uh, the request according with the, their, their, their specification. The request is then sent for uh, each microservice. Uh, of course, that uh, we have here uh, different algorithms uh, that mean different computation times, that mean that the responses from these microservices back to the orchestrator can have different times. Uh, so whenever the uh, last uh, uh, piece of data is uh, returned, 
then uh, the data collector agent uh, enters in action and basically collects the, the data from the active uh, microservice agents that were uh, created uh, uh, based on that request. It merges that data uh, and basically creates a final output. Uh, this final output uh, follows the, the database model, uh, the data model, I'm sorry, uh, that was agreed upon. Uh, it only adds uh, a new key, a new property, so that uh, we can identify the microservice uh, corresponding to the data that we are uh, uh, getting. And that uh, final output is then uh, returned to the user interface. I will hand over back to uh, Gustav. Thank you, Rui. So following for the user interface component, three different UI components were created for a social allocation activity where a manager can allocate workers to different production lines. In the first component, the order overview component comprises of a button that uh, shows a table displaying orders. When the button retrieve order info is clicked, up-to-date order information is retrieved from the knowledge base, including production priorities, due dates, and the number of required workers for each order and the current use case. In the figure below, one can see data retrieved from the knowledge base of a part to be produced on a production line. Next, the worker overview with manual allocation components provides an overview of all workers relevant to a production unity comprising many production lines that enables the manager to manually select workers to a production line and make proposals on how to allocate them. The managers can switch lines using the tabs on the top of the page and based on parameters of the given use case, it can display different colors to the suitability or availability of a worker. And on the bottom, three cards with the proposed workers are displayed. A counter at the bottom displays how many are necessary. In the third one, the allocation proposal through AI service components, the name of the AI service with a short description is presented. When the AI service is triggered in the button, a request for calling the corresponding services is made, and a proposed solution based on the AI service selected is provided also in the form of cards. These cards provide detailed insights, helping managers make informed decisions. The component is highly configurable and can be adapted to different AI services. These UI components are built using React and are designed to be modular and reusable. Once finalized, they are uploaded to the Olive component pipeline, making them accessible within the configuration environment for deployment as web applications. The integration of the user interface is focused on flexibility, usability, and adaptability to different situations with the goal of empowering managers to make efficient decisions through a variety of possibilities in selecting workers, as in the examples. The next component, I'm going to talk about the knowledge base. So the knowledge base is the heart of our data storage, providing knowledge to the whole system. It stores digital representation of physical assets, user the defined properties, sensor data, machine learning results, and also stakeholders' digital representations. This repository is essential for storing and retrieving configuration files, decision models, all the necessary data to support our decision-making processes. The data flow is a topic directly concerning the knowledge base. The process begins with the configurator, which aligns user interfaces and AI services with the necessary data from the knowledge base. This information is sent to the orchestrator as a workflow. When a user submits a request, the workflow triggers the execution of AI or multi-agent services essential for the decision support. If additional data is needed, it is retrieved from the knowledge base via REST API services. The AI services then generate recommendations, which are presented to the user through intuitive interfaces to enhance their understanding. This standardized interaction between components using REST APIs in JSON formats ensures a consistent data flow. And in this next image, we can see the prototype diagram representing how the components were deployed in the connections between the devices and services. 
getting a bit more technical in this part, I'm going to describe how these components were deployed and which technologies are part of the framework. So the Olive framework, as I said before, and workflow engine that roasted on AWS deployed in a sandbox environment, utilizing a mix of serverless, AWS Lambda functions and AWS EC2 instances with AWS DynamoDB for file storage. Its sandbox environment has its own API for managing workflows. The UI components are stored in this AWS buckets and distributed in CloudFront CDN in order to provide a scalable deployment. The decision models created in the BIAP tool are then integrated with Olive and server used for the worker allocation, both deployed as Docker containers. The objective of this setup is to enable flexible and configurable decision services easily started the management using Apache tool to handle network security. Our AI services are hosted on dedicated servers with REST API endpoints configured for these various functionalities. The deployment leverages Flask and Vectsoig to create and manage RESTful endpoints, providing an infrastructure for AI services integration and scaling. A secured RESTful API developed using Python and the Flask framework supports the workload balance use case scenario. This API uses the JWT tokens for secure access and includes endpoints for worker allocation results. The API is deployed using Docker with an Apache proxy serving, adding this extra layer of security that said, the setup ensures continuous conflict-free operation alongside other services. In this next part, extending the IDSS for new use case scenarios, I'm going to present how our current developments can be exported to new use case scenarios, which is an important characteristic related to the flexibility in applicating the framework to different settings. So extending workflows and user interfaces, the modular architecture of our work allows for this flexible adaptation to various use cases, enabling the adaptation and reconfiguration of the system New workflows can be integrated and existing ones modified. For example, we can add or modify workflows and user interfaces to, see, to suit other specific scenarios. When utilizing the configurator components, we can speed up the system configuration, making it easier to integrate new services and update existing ones. For user interfaces, reusable UI components are developed in order to be adaptable to the new use cases. The components can be quickly modified to fit them, ensuring that the user experience remains intuitive and effective for a variety of situations. Extending decision services through conceptual modeling, building on our previous experiments with rule-based and decision tree-based services. When applied to other use cases for rule-based decision-making, a new model containing decision knowledge must be created. This involves understanding the decision problem, testing the rules, ensuring they solve the problem. Rule-based approaches are particularly effective when expert knowledge is available and can be encoded into the system. Decision trees, on the other hand, are beneficial when historical data is available or can be generated. When training new decision trees with new data, we can enhance the system ability to classify and predict outcomes. Both approaches offer transparency in decision-making, which is indispensable for the acceptance and trust by the user. The conceptual modeling approach can also be extended to other methods supporting the configuration and adaptation of the decision services. Now, in the perspective of extending the system's capability through AI enrichment services, we can say that the general resource allocation problem can be split in two layers. In the first layer, the focus is on scheduling orders to machines, considering factors like geometry, due dates, production priority. The second layer involves daily worker allocation to production lines, incorporating a time dimension to ensure fair distribution of tasks. This two-layered approach requires optimization techniques where AI approaches such as reinforcement learning and Monte Carlo tree search are well suited for such challenges. Reinforcement learning learns from past experiences to find optimal strategies, while Monte Carlo tree search simulates future scenarios to identify the best actions. Extending real-world data provisioning to enhance decision-making in the real-world data the incorporation of additional components like uh, data catalog and more decision pattern services is a viable path to follow 
the data catalog helps professionals to extract maximum value from organizational data, manage the data, while supporting functions like user registration, data asset searching. New decision pattern services can include optimization-based resource allocation, predictive maintenance for complex production units, and stress detection use machine learning. These services will leverage data from wearables and other sensors to provide insights into physiological and cognitive emotional strain, helping to optimize worker well-being and productivity. Persona-based clustering further refine our understanding of worker requirements, enable more tailored and effective resource allocation. Anonymized information to improve decision-making can be obtained when clustering data into persona-based groups. So in this webinar, I started describing the building blocks composing the system, understanding the structure and role within the framework, our integration of AI services achieved through REST API endpoints, algorithms employed, including neural networks, decision trees, linear assignment assignments, multi-agent systems, in addition to the conceptual modeling to support decision-making. We incorporate human factors data using wearable sensors to measure workers' physiological and psychological strain, providing a resilience score aiming to improve worker well-being and productivity. With the user interface component, we facilitate the visualization of key decision-making aspects bridging the decision maker with the system data to provide transparency and foster trust. The configurator facilitating the creation of decision models and system configurations. The orchestrator leveraging a meaningful interconnection of the system components in a workflow-based and multi-agent approach. The knowledge base supporting various system components in their configuration and the decision-making processes. Further, the deployment covers the AI services that hosts and access points while considering the security of the system. Finally, we discuss extending the capabilities to the new industrial use cases with the goal of improving decision processes while considering productivity and addressing human factors capabilities, ultimately providing a democratic, artificial, intelligent decision support system. I'd like to first thank to all participants of the Fair Work project that made these achievements possible. Thank you very much, and thank you all for joining in this webinar. In case there are any questions, please feel free to ask. Well, thank you very much to Gustavo and Rui for their interesting presentation. Are there any questions from the participants? If not, uh, I want to thank everyone for coming. Our next webinar will be in the mid of July. So uh, stay posted for this and have a nice evening and a nice weekend and see you soon, hopefully. Thank you, bye. Thank you, bye-bye. Bye, have a nice weekend.